My name is Dean. I call myself, I suppose, a wood artist. I got started with this, let's see, about, I don't know, 16 years ago or so. I, I moved into the wilderness in Alaska and I wanted to live off the land and learn how the natives lived. And while I was out there, you know, I had to learn how to survive. So I started carving fishing implements, hunting implements, stuff like that. And really got inspired by Eskimo artifacts. And so I really started researching them and started, started making the stuff that the people that used to live there made. So I really got into making harpoons and bone fish hooks and, and sewing needles and things like that. So I did that for years living out in the, in the woods there in Alaska. Eventually I came out of the woods and I came down to Seattle and I, I found out about a wood boat building school here at the Wood Technology Center. And I, I started uh, taking woodworking classes. Wood was a little bit different medium than the bone and the antler I was used to. It was a lot softer, but it was cool. And then I, I uh, they, they really encouraged, this is a really eco-friendly green kind of city or part of the country, so they really encouraged us to dig wood out of the recycle bin at the school. They had this huge wood dumpster. All kinds of stuff went in there, so every day I'd go in there, I'd root around and kept finding these little tiny pieces of really cool wood. It's like, whoa. So I started saving it all, just boxes of it was coming home. And after a while, I started thinking, well, this kind of sucks having to dig through this giant dumpster for little tiny pieces of wood. So I started thinking about, okay, what classrooms are putting that wood in there? I'd go to their classrooms, dig in their little garbage cans, find the wood. And then I got the idea, it's like, well, why don't I just find the people that are putting the wood in the garbage? work out a deal with them where they just save the wood and I trade them for the wood. And so I started getting wood that way. It was cool. What was I using it for? Right in the beginning uh, at the school I found this one piece of wood. It was from Mexico. It's beautiful. It's called Bocote. And I had this knot in there and that knot just spoke to me. I don't really consider myself that much of an artistic person. but. That knot spoke to me and it said I want to become a necklace. I want to become a pendant. So I, I grabbed it. I cut it out. When the teacher wasn't looking, you know, on the school tools, I cut it out and made this nice pendant for my wife out of it. It turned out beautiful. My mother-in-law saw it, she wanted one, and her friends wanted some, and everybody else wanted some. It's like, wow, this is cool. So I started making pendants. And I threw in a couple earrings here and there, and my wife was selling beaded stuff at the farmer's market, so I'd go with her. You know, she was a little uncomfortable sitting there by herself. And, so I figured I'd throw my stuff out too, and it started to sell, you know, really started to sell. So then I started getting into conflicts with the teachers, you know. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've spent more time making wood jewelry in class, in boat building class, than, than working on the projects. But yeah, over time, I, I wheeled and dealed tools while I was at school, selling people's used tools for them. And so I got a few tools together in my shop and started working at home, making, making stuff that sold. I, I don't make a lot of stuff that doesn't sell. It's just doesn't, not a good way for me to make a living. I guess that's what, in my mind, sets me aside from being an artist, but I don't know. Everybody else says I'm an artist, and maybe I am. I make super lightweight, organic feeling, reclaimed wood earrings. So after school, I learned that I could find other people out there using exotic and cool woods, and they're throwing their scraps away. So I started finding the people that use the best woods and hitting them up for their scraps. So now I have over 300 species of wood. I really nerd out on the different kinds of woods. I know every wood that I use, I won't use wood unless I know what it is. And I've really learned where to find the perfect cut in a piece of wood, and I market it really well. So they're, they range in size from about this small up to about this big. Oval is the primary shape that sells best, so I make ovals. I do a lot of rectangles and then some other random shapes, but ovals and rectangles seems to be where it's at. I sell usually at farmers markets, street fairs, stores, all over the place online. But yeah, everybody comments on how lightweight they are, how unique they are. Nobody, they, everybody says that they've never met anybody else who makes what I make. So, I guess I have a unique product that's marketable that people like. Wearable art. I don't know, I like, I like being discovered like at events like this. It makes you feel a little good. Not that I'm really interested in becoming famous. I'm more interested in making a living to support my family. I didn't get married till pretty late, so 
now I have a family and I just want to put all my energy into supporting them. I just happen to find a, a career doing something that I really, really enjoy, that other people seem to enjoy. This is all I've done now for seven years is make wood earrings and sell wood earrings. Sold a lot of wood earrings. My name is Dean and I am a raw artist. Oh, 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 oh,